Hello, everyone. Um, looks like the live is working, so which is great news. Um, fantastic. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm going to say hello to a few audiences here, but I want to introduce myself just in case you haven't seen me on here already, which is very unlikely at this stage as I've been streaming live at seven or eight o'clock every single night now for almost a year, actually just over a year, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so I'd like to say hello to everyone again, as I always do every single night. Hello to everyone on Instagram. Hello to everyone on YouTube, everyone on our Facebook page, everyone on our Facebook group. Hello to you all. I'm going to be able to grab comments as we go tonight, and um, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm organized. Hi, Andy Davis. How are you? Good to see you, mate. Um, so yes, live across every platform, as always. Uh, it's our 7 o'clock live tonight, uh, which we're doing 7 o'clock every single night at the moment on... Um, on every platform because it works works so seven o'clock works at the moment i think maybe outside of corona times eight o'clock works as well i don't know i'm experimenting with both hello to you all like i said my name is matt bailey i'm the national ambassador for the scotch malt whiskey society here in australia uh we are the world's leading whiskey club we're the world's biggest whiskey club and the world's most awarded and biggest whiskey independent bottler uh which is really exciting because it's a great um it's a great club to be a part of i i love talking about whiskey with you every single night. And you'd think it'd be something that I'd get tired of, let alone you, but I'm really glad that people love to tune in um, and be a part of these streams. I'm getting a lot of people on Facebook at the moment, which is great. Not a whole lot of people on Instagram. I think people are migrating over to the Facebook a bit more, the Facebook <laughs> uh, a bit more, which is great. Uh, really appreciate everyone tuning in. Joel Bradbury, David Taylor, Robbie Tucknot, Brendan Osmers, Joel Bradbury, I think I said your name twice. I did. Stuart Mountjoy. Everyone's tuning in, which is great. Irina, Samuel, Robert, Scotty. Everyone's in. Good to see you all. Uh, I'm going to grab some comments as we go, like I said, because there's um, there's obviously a lot that I need to cover off uh, tonight and and grab some of the comments along the way. Um, so let me just do that now. Excellent. Okay. So... Instagram is struggling. Yeah, I've noticed that, Joel. I've noticed Instagram is struggling a bit. I think there's a bit, a bit too much, too much, um, too much going on on the platform at the moment. Um, that's okay. Look, you can catch me on Facebook group. I'm streaming to four platforms. If you can't catch me on one of them, there's there's something wrong there. So that's okay. Let's 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 kick off. Tonight is about beach coma. Now I don't have a very long time tonight because I'm going to tell you after after this stream, uh, starting at about seven thirty or just after, is the whiskey roundtable, which is going to be a weekly format. Uh, this is hosted by the Oak Barrel. It's an initiative led by the Oak Barrel by Scott Fitzsimons. And he's going to be um, leading that uh, discussion uh, each night, which is great. So I'm going to have a chat with him, uh, with Andy Milne from South Trade, special guests as well, like Alex Dahlenberg. Peter Bignall is on tonight as well, which is great. Uh, I'll see how Peter goes. I don't think, he's, I don't think he's, his tech is very, is very up to scratch at the moment out in Kempton. Okay. Hello, everyone. Tuned, for thank you for tuning in. Bob Winting from the other side of the world has tuned in. John Homan, good to see you, mate. Been a while. Cam Gilkerson, good to see you. Okay, let me let me start off start off by saying tonight is about beach coma. I'm going to hold that up for everyone to see. Uh, beach coma, the SMWS beach coma. Um, it's a blended malt Scotch whiskey. Let's start by talking about definitions for a moment here. If you open either digitally or physically. I'm going to go with physical because you can see it then as well. If you open up your April outturn, um, you'll see, uh, which just came out three or four weeks ago now, um, you'll see page 12 and 13. I wrote an article on Cameron Bridge, um, the distillery. It was a distillery feature for distiller for cask G4.9, a 40-year-old whiskey. You know what? I was in a, co a conversation thread on Facebook earlier today and people, someone was looking for a 40-year-old whiskey. And the cheapest one they could find that was any good and not something packaged up for a supermarket um, was, I think, a Glenn Farkless 40-year-old for $1,500. There's a 40-year-old single cask of $5.99. I still think members get such a good deal with this stuff. I know it's a grain whiskey and grain whiskeys are going to be typically cheaper. That's fine. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's going to be cheaper, but it's still a sherried grain whiskey. It's still got a lot of character. It's still got so much life and grain. I've always said this before, grain whiskey wakes up after about 30 years. It starts getting a different character. It starts, the complexities start really evolving. However, I, I'm losing my track here. The five types of Scotch whiskey, single malt, single grain, blended malt, blended whiskey, and blended grain. Five main types of Scotch whiskey. 
what everything we bottle at society in our normal bottles that look a bit like that, etc. Um, there's a 24 year old from Distillery Nine, honey and spice poached pear. Uh, that was a lovely whiskey, actually. Um, they all ha- they are all single cask. This is 95 or 96 percent of what we do is single cask whiskey. Uh, on the periphery of that, however, is the heresy editions of things, things that have come out of Ewan Campbell's workshop, things that he's worked on um, that are sort of curios along the way. Um, So that's, these are curios of uh, Ewan's desk. These are experiments. And one of them we started with, uh, the first one he started with was exotic cargo, which is a blended sherried malt. The second one was Pete Ferry. Then there was Pete Ferry batch two. Then there was old fashioned, then there was, no, no, no. Then there was um, Trifle Delightful, sorry, the blended cognac. Then there was the blended old fashioned, which was the, not an old fashioned cocktail. It was whiskey that had been extra matured in X IPA casks. And now we're up to batch six, uh, beach coma, blended batch six, beach coma. Sorry, I've not tasted this yet. This bottle is sealed. You can probably see there on the camera. I'll show it up close, nice and close for you. Um, this is a sealed bottle of Beachcomber. I have not tasted it yet, but I have tasted a version of this. Now, what I mean by that is, I'm going to get to my notes here for a second. So I've got notes. I'm actually organized tonight. Um, it says here in, in some of the sort of the uh, nitty gritty detail of this particular um, this particular release, it says that it's a selection of entirely first fill bourbon barrels. So remember, this is a blended malt. There's no grain whiskey. It's all blended single malts together, just for those who are unsure what blended malts are. So it's uh, first fill bourbon barrels, all from Campbelltown on the Highlands. So the Campbelltown regions. So you've got Glen Gyle, Springbank, Glen Scotia up that way. And Highlands, you've got a lot of distilleries in the Highlands. Um, so it's ca- casks from both regions. That's, that's the first important point. That shapes the oily and coastal nature of this particular bottling. The reason why I'm talking about Beachcomber, by the way, just I should have mentioned earlier, this is coming out now. Done. It's online. There you go. Don't leave this video. There's plenty. Don't, there's, there's plenty to go to. Don't worry. We've got a hundred of them up on the website. We've got a hundred to sell. So if you want a bottle of beach coma, you can grab it now. The price on the heresy releases uh, has come down. It, we, uh, we've, we've worked really hard to make this happen. Uh, they first, uh, the exotic cargo was like 149, I believe, or 145. This is 120. Big swell was 120. The, we found a few extra cases of the uh, trifle delightful. It's back on the website, by the way, at 120. So these are really good, fun, approachable, affordable, quaffable, enjoyable whiskies. They are not single cask, cask strength rarities, oddities. They are, uh, it is a unique blend that Ewan has worked on that you can have on the side. You can have something, a bottle of this sitting on your shelf without it being something that your cousin who doesn't really know whiskey opens up and then, you know, suddenly you've lost a whole bottle. So, but it does say here that it is the 12th version of this. So, they assessed several different recipes, several different blending recipes of Beachcoma to finally get to um, the one that they presented to tasting panel was the 12th recipe. Ewan remarked that it had a slightly higher proportion of Campbelltown, bits and bobs. I'm going to open this up. I think I tried, I actually sampled a, a version of, of this release. I think maybe in version two or three or something. You could tell it was there. It was there, but it, was, it needed more work. This is very exciting. So I'm going to grab some of the comments before I even pour that. One second. Um, Hayden Dare says it was one of the first SMWS bottles I opened. Uh, won it in your competition. Oh, you want? That's right. You did win a competition. You did. Well, you won one of our competitions, Hayden. Well done. And definitely sold me on the society. That's awesome to hear, Hayden. I'm I'm so glad so many people find different journeys into the society. We've had an influx of new members this month, which is great. Um, because I, I can't stress this enough to existing members. The more members we have the more allocations that Andrew can work with as seller master to grow the number of bottlings and the size of outturn. Speaking of size of outturn, I'll talk some, talk a little bit about May outturn in a moment, but let's talk about beach coma. Um, uh, yeah. So you and said on Twitter that the big swell is made up of three space sides. Yes. So big swell only had three different space side distilleries in it. Uh, exotic cargo had four, I believe. So it was a little bit of a, more of a refined blend for big swell. Actually, it's a bit, it's a bit closer to, um, uh, the recipe that they're after, which I think is quite good. I actually think Big Swell is less sherry than Exotic Cargo, but it's a far more balanced whiskey, if that makes sense. It's got a bit more of that spice and a bit more of that sort of funky sherry notes, which you, I like in a whiskey. So let's open Beach Coma. I've heard the initial um, the initial reports from this have been very, um, very positive out of the UK. The UK 
love this release. Here we go. Sound test. Woo. Whiskey Gaucho, good to see you on Instagram. There's not many people on Instagram tonight. It's mostly on our Facebook group, but that's okay. Um, and our Facebook page. Loving the hand gestures. Rob Scott, I'll give you all the hand gestures you could possibly want. The camera is very close tonight, so you get all, you got all of it. Kathleen Davies, good to see you. Tyson, good to see you. Steve Oates, of course, mate. Good to see you. I'm going to pour my first ever dram of beach coming. Let's have a discussion about it. I'm talking a million miles an hour again. I do that when I get excited. Let's pour a generous dram of that. Pop that there. Pop the, the cork back in that. It might need a minute or two to open up, but... Ooh, that's fantastic. You know what? That was not what I was expecting. I was expecting... In my head, I just sort of had that sort of feeling like oh, this might be sort of a bit like Pete Ferry Batch 3. I don't know why I thought that, but kind of like this might be the next iteration in Pete Ferry. It's not at all on the nose. Pete Ferry is quite brash on the nose. It was quite sort of quite peated. Um, you can definitely, definitely immediately smell that Campbelltown funk. So if you're looking for a Campbelltown style whiskey, which it has lots of Campbelltown whiskey in it, a blended malt with Campbelltown whiskey. I don't know any other blended malts on the market at the moment that have Campbelltown malt in it. I mean, there's, there have been the occasional Campbelltown blended whiskeys and they're sort of historical bottlings these days. Uh, Joel says, uh, given the 10 I have is, is the favourite bottles, uh, is the favourite bottles of SMDF I uh, haven't and is oily and coastal and two of my favourite distilleries are Highland, I'm guessing I'm going to like this. You are, I reckon you are going to like this. And there's another comment here from you and I'm going to remark on. He says, um, the panel favoured this for its balance and complexity. I completely get that. A blended malt of great intrigue displaying remarkable texture and vibrancy. But the quote I like most here, he says, is that for me, he says, it's, for, it's one to take in the hip flask on a walk. I couldn't agree more. This is the kind of whiskey where uh, I personally don't like hip flasks. because I find the alloy of, of them makes, them makes the whiskey taste a bit funny. Uh, I know I'm being really picky there, but it's a bit like crystal decanters. I don't, don't see the use in them. Hip flasks are good, I guess, but like you've got to find the right one. And I find if you leave the whiskey too long in there, it sours the whiskey. It gets a bit sort of metallic and tinny tasting. But this would be one to take in a hip flask on a nice bushwalk or something like that. I think this would be remarkable. Nick Baxter, Zeno Davidoff, thank you everyone for tuning in. Seven o'clock. Tonight, for those who've just tuned in, we're talking about Beachcomber. Now, this is a, the latest heresy release from the Scotchmore Whiskey Society. Ewan Campbell's mad experimentation of blending malts together. He's gone from big sherried whiskies to massive peated whiskies. And this time we're exploring one of the more popular flavor profiles, oily and coastal. It doesn't out the blended malts. However, these heresy bottlings don't have a flavor profile indicator on them. Like we do with our regular bottlings. So no sweet, fruity and mellow, as you can see there, it's just beach coma. So the beach coma blended malt, seven years old, a combination of Campbellton and Highland uh, malts, all from first fill bourbon barrels. That's really exciting for me as well. It doesn't have any of that, that. I mean, I love refill, team refill, but that first fill bourbon barrel character after seven years, it's vibrant. It's rich. The no, I've not even tasted it yet. Just the nosing it so far. That's fantastic. That's truly fantastic. A 50% ABV. Oh, wow. The finish on that is like a, definitely it's like, it's like Campbelltown on the nose, Highland on the finish. I like that. I like that. I can get around that. Get, yeah, get a glass hip flask. Yeah, I would get a glass hip flask. I actually do have a really nice hip flask. It's kind of tucked away back there behind my welcome box. I'll have to pull it out for another video. Um, that's actually really nice. It comes with little, little um, drinking glasses and everything with it. And something like a, a cylindrical carry thing. Uh, it's quite nice. Uh, you can carry three whiskeys in it, which is even better. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, I like hip flasks. because I'm just not, I don't use, I don't find the opportunity to use them. I'll just take a bottle if I'm going somewhere, if I was going camping or something, take a nice bottle or something. Um, I don't know that one, Mark. I don't know that Gauldron's blended malt. I don't know that at all. Sorry, but I'll have to look it up. Um, yeah, hip flasks are good for rugby games, camping and festivals. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joel says I love a hip flask whiskey but I also like infinity bottles I don't know if we can be friends <laughs> no look each to their own look I, I know I sound like a grouch when I say that I really I, I do actually look 
I see the I, I I do see the purpose in hip flasks and for festivals and for uh, for bush hikes and stuff like that. They're fantastic. I'm just not overly keen of keeping whiskey in for too long, and it makes me nervous. Uh, however, infinity bottles, I think, are a tremendous waste of good whiskey. So, therefore, I don't do those, <laughs> as we've talked about before. Um, so, this is a lot of fun. This is out now on the website. Um, members can pick it up from tonight. Um, we uploaded it tonight. The email is going out to all members tomorrow. But if, you, if you're watching this right now and you want to jump in early on that, you are more than welcome to, of course. Um, so, you know, a good, a good bit of fun there. Hip flasks and weddings. Yeah, exactly. Uh, wedding drams. Is that, and this is exactly the kind of whiskey that would be perfect for hip flask because it's kind of like you, you don't want to pack away a, a nuanced 26-year-old single cask or something. Even that bottle I was holding in that 24-year-old single cask, it might just be a lot, bit lost. It might be a bit sort of like, oh, you know, that's a that's a, um, that's a a shame. It's not really what I was, I was hoping for or or whatnot there. So, you know, either way, twice uh, I did Stuart Mountjoy. It, there's a time and place for both, I guess. But, um, oops, sorry, some feedback coming through there. Um, hi, Gerald. Sorry, I forgot to say hello, Gerald. Good to see you. Um, Dita says, "Who can forget uh, HS 1.1 perfectly Purell? Yeah, you should pack that in a hip flask. There you go. Uh, North Star do one. Okay, I don't know the North Star one. Oh, they did a yeah, they did do a young one. They did like a five or six year old blend or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, just take the bowl bottle, uh, Joel. Uh, yeah, I mean, either way." Um, hello, Ross Anderson. Hello. Good to see you, mate. Uh, <laughs> a bit hard to conceal a whole bottle in your pants. Dieter, I don't know where you're going that you need to conceal your uh, hip flasks, but you know, you do you, man. Um, yeah, it doesn't keep good condition in a flask. It doesn't. I mean, whiskey doesn't keep great condition in a flask, unfortunately, but that's just the way it goes. Um, so let me grab some of these questions coming in. Um, Ali, good to see you. I hope you're well. Louis, good to see you. Some of the some of the Tassie contingent coming through, which is great. Um, how does Beach Cover compare to Exotic Cargo and Big Swell? Worlds apart, Robert. Absolutely worlds apart. I mean, uh, I, I find this far more um, like soft Campbelltown fruits is a really good phrase for it. That sort of like uh, mineral, mineralic kind of like uh, sandalwood. Soft Campbelltown fruits. It's lovely. It's such an easy drinking whiskey as well. Um, but the, all the heresies are. They all they all have that lovely sort of depth of complexity and creation. Like I said at the beginning of this video, for anyone who missed out, this is the 12th iteration of this blend. So this is the 12th version of this blend that Ewan made, Ewan Campbell made at his desk to present to panel. So there's some real thought that's gone into creating these, which is really exciting because it, it's, it's a whole other dimension to the society. It's something a bit different. You can enjoy, you can take places. You can quaff a bottle of this. They're 120 bucks. And I think that's very, very good for a 50% ABV uh, blend of Campbellton and Highly whisk Highland whiskeys. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. 120 is a steal. Too bad the allocation size is only small. 97 less. Yeah, we've only got, a, I think we've got 120 bottles all up or something. And um, we're 10 or 15 have been uh, pushed into a, a membership offer. So which is a good time for me to say, if you are not a member and you're watching this, and I know there's some non-members who tune in each night, if you want membership plus big, uh, plus big Swell or plus Beach Coma, you can do that on the website now, which is also a great opportunity for you to grab, grab, some, um, grab a membership. <laughs> no, no, Owen, sorry. The website, it was 1,999 total made for the world. So that's it. It's 2,000 bottles worldwide. It was probably meant to be 2,000, but Ewan probably pinched one for his desk. Good on him. You know what? He he held a, a Twitter tasting last night. No, last night. Yesterday afternoon. Time, time. Is anyone else losing track of time during um, coronavirus times? Is it, it, all the days are sort of like, yeah, was that Easter or was that just a weekend? You know. Anyway, that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> so it's, it's 1,999 bottles worldwide. And Australia branch got, I think, 120, 140 of those. So there's about 100 left already. Uh, we saw a bit of a rush on this afternoon when we uploaded them. I think some people keep a keen, much more keen eye on the website than I realized. Um, I'll grab any other comments and questions coming in. Um, I took a small bottle of um, Southern Comfort down my pants to the first big day out. <laughs> Andrew, that's going back a bit. The first big day out. I'm going to guess that was... Uh, First big day out. Don't tell me. I reckon that would have been 19, uh, 1992. I'm going to go 92, 93 or 92, maybe 95. Mm. My guess is 92 for the first ever big day out. 
Um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I think it was, I think it was around then. I remember I, I got to go to Big Dad in, I think, 98 uh, or 99 and Home Bake before that. Home Bake was a fest, another festival that happened in Sydney, which was all local bands. It wasn't as big as, uh, it wasn't as big as Big Dad. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Ancient history. Um, very cool. Very cool indeed. Um, I'll grab some other questions coming in. Um, I'm measuring time in bottle kills. <laughs> Stuart, I know the feeling. It's it's uh, There's a lot of bottle kills happening in this office of late uh, and there's a lot of um, new bottles being opened as well. It's a good excuse to open stuff. As I said the other night, uh, to open things up and you know enjoy them. That's what they're there for. Um, I'm really enjoying this. You know what? And that's the whole idea about whiskey. I know we can't enjoy it with uh, large groups of friends or even small groups of friends at the moment, but the, or even at great bars or at, where, or at dinner parties or anything like that, which is a real shame. But I could really see this is the kind of bottle that you could easily pack a few into your um, pack a few into your suitcase, take take a cup, take take a bottle with you if you like camping, take one with you to the park, exercising. Of course, don't forget it's exercising. It's not it's not uh, recreational. <laughs> no, no, I'm not encouraging any bad practice here. But it is um it's definitely one that is a bit of fun and you can take it places, enjoy it, do your thing. Um, yeah, no, Twitter last night with you was like 11-ish last night our time. Yeah, it was 2 p.m. his time. Um, that, was, that was good fun. He, it, didn't get, it didn't get a whole lot of traction, unfortunately, which is a real shame because Ewan is a, one of those guys. He's a bit of a dark horse. Creating stuff like this, and, you know, it's I, uh, so many things I want to ask him, of course. And I did an interview with him, by the way. Shameless little plug. I was the first person ever to interview Ewan on video. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, so we did an interview at his house in Edinburgh. And so if you, uh, if you troll back through the, uh, our YouTube channel, you can find the full interview there. Uh, it was about May last year. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, Joel says, I duct taped a 200 mil bottle of Jim Beam to my leg for a Clipsal 500 in 2008. Now that's a memory. <laughs> or maybe it wasn't a memory. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, uh, and Zeno said he took a cask 11.38, which is a lovely cask. Um, to knock out hard style festivals on the same day as SMW's Christmas party, best day ever. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's one way to do it. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so yeah, uh, that was tonight was just about talk, talking a little bit about uh, Beach Coma, which is out now. We've released it on the website now. It's a little bit earlier, earlier than we thought we might, but it means that we can, um, uh, you know, like I say, have a, have a chat and, <laughs> and, uh, um, and it's available uh, and now. Said he took, uh, if you so desire, if it's something that you're after, it's uh, a lot of fun, of course. Um, was the 99 big day out where uh, Courtney Love, uh, yeah, I think it may have been the one. Uh, it, it was certainly around 98, 99, somewhere around there with there some weird, there were some weird things at music festivals back then, I think. It's just, you know, that post Nirvana era of music festivals in Sydney and around the around Australia, of course um yeah good fun thank you everyone for all the great questions not a big live stream tonight just an introduction to beach coma now as i said i'll just just a shameless little plug the next live stream starts in about seven or eight minutes uh which is on the um which is going to be broadcast to our facebook page which is the scotch malt whiskey society australia it's going to be parallel broadcast to there so i'll be monitoring that for comments and questions so please jump on our page not our group and grab some and Ask away. It's going to be a long session, so take you know plenty of time. But um, otherwise, you can also catch me tomorrow, which is a special guest. I'm going to announce it now. It's Murray Hassan. Now, some of you have uh, met Murray before. He is the ultimate book nerd. No one knows more about whiskey literature than Murray. So I'm having Murray on as a special guest tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here again, so don't miss it. It'll be YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, and Instagram, all the platforms, of course. And I'll see you all then. And then Friday for our big Friday drinks Q&A. A bit of fun on the Friday night there. Uh, teasers for May. Yes, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Mark said he, a friend of his smuggled half a bottle of bourbon into an ACDC concert in a barbecue chicken. <laughs> you gotta, you got to praise the inventiveness of Australians for sneaking alcohol into music events. It, it, it really is something else. Um, so teasers for May. Here we go. I was going to save most of these for Friday, but I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of teasers. First of all, there's not one, but two malts of the month. That's right. Two malts of the month. Just so there's enough bottles to go around, there's two really uh, approachable and well-priced malts of the month coming in the May out term. Second little teaser for you. May is the month where all the whiskey festivals would normally happen. 
Spirit of Speyside Festival, a, a small but burgeoning Highland Whiskey Festival, the Isla Festival and Campbelltown Malts Festival. Of course, before COVID, uh, we had and all of our bottlings for the festival single casks already arranged. These are some really extraordinary single casks that we pick out for uh, the festivals and they're released at the festivals. We're going to release them so that you can enjoy them in your home um, from, from May onwards. There's a couple of special bottlings in there, of course, that will have to be ballot only. So that makes it really fair for everyone, but otherwise there's plenty to go around. So there's a good list of festival releases in there. Um, Joel, you asked the question. Um, and so the, there's some awesome special edition festival casks coming in May. There's also some other interesting spirits coming in May as well. And I said spirits, not just whiskey. There's a very special bottling of something that we've, uh, that last time we released one of these, it vanished in about a minute online. So I'm not sure how this one will go, but we'll see how we go. It's, it's, it's a bit of fun. Uh, I'll leave you to, to decide what that is. I'll reveal a bit more on Friday, but it's, we're still about two weeks out. So I will see you all. Um, it's the Friday, the 1st of May. So it's a very early outturn for May. 1st of May, first Friday falls on the 1st. That's when outturn is. I will see you all tomorrow night. Otherwise, I'll see you all for the Oak Barrel Whiskey Roundtable. It's just a bunch of whiskey guys and girls talking whiskey. Bit of fun. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you all tomorrow night or I'll see you for the Australian Whiskey Roundtable in far three minutes <laughs> via the Oak Barrel via our page. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and I'll see you all soon.